a Ceratosaurus. Not the biggest carnivores around. But he has the stupidity of Mr. Gas Bravery to challenge a creature bigger than him. But is this a Chihuahua situation? Let's see what this Serrata can do to avoid dying a dog's death. Hello, my name is Adam Vokta and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Ceratosaurus. Now, any future update may change the way you play as this creature. This is the second time I'm making a video on the Ceratosaurus, so my time with it aren't that limited. However, I may not be correct in every aspect of the fighting style, so I, this is up for debate. If you do find something disagreeable, then just comment it down below. In this video, we will be going over the creature's arsenal, the type of subspecies you should choose to grow, the terrain compatibility, and the type of fights you can find itself in. We'll also go over the type of fighting style the Ceratosaurus are best suited for. This video does focus on solo play as Ceratosaurus, so do expect a fighting style suited for solo play. We have three options for head ability. The first one being the standard bite ability that causes medium damage, nothing too much about it. The second ability is a charge bite that does a certain amount of damage depending on how long you charge it. The third ability is a trashing ability that does heavy damage, however, it does have a recall of one fourth of the damage you deal. We have two options for sensibilities, the first one being all for one. Basically, power of friendship increases the damage output depending on how many friends you're friends with. The second ability is a Berserker ability that increases your damage output and reduces your cooldown, basically a last-ditch adrenaline rush. We have three options for hide, the first one being Resilient Scale that increases your Venom and Bleed healing by 30%, the second hide are Top Scout that increases your armor, and the last option are Lightweight Scale that increases your speed, at what it seems to be no drawbacks. We have two options for Back Limb ability, the first one being Kick which causes medium damage. The second ability is just a shove ability that just lunges you forward causing knockback to anything you hit. Lastly, the tail abilities, we have three options, the first one being Armored Tail that reduces any damage or status effect inflicted upon it. The second ability is Tail Attack, just your standard uh, tail attack. The third ability is a Balanced Tail that increases your turning speed and turning your radius. If you're playing solo, then this is the arsenal I recommend to you. To be completely honest, your arsenal kind of depends on what you're fighting. However, if you just want a default arsenal, then this is what I recommend. Also, I'm just gonna touch lightly on group play, but this is the arsenal I recommend if you're going to play as in a group. I'll also come back to why I recommend this ability over others. When it comes to what subspecies you should grow, I would say it kind of falls between the stamina recovery and the armored subspecies. You see, you see, there are only so many creatures that gives the venom status effect, so it's kind of not necessary. As for which one between stamina recovery and the armored, well, let's just say, it, again, it kind of depends on what you're fighting. To be completely honest, I'm gonna leave this choice up to you, but I recommend between these two subspecies. When it comes to what terrain you should try and fight in, then, as a solo Serato, Please, please, for the love of fight, fight them in an area with elevation and hindrances. You see, it's really difficult to win any fight as a solo Serrata without them. I'll explain why, but first I need to explain to you the fighting style of the Serrata. To understand why the Serrata need these conditions when it comes to terrain, we kinda first need to find out where it is on the food chain. Because players' PvP skills are subjective, I rate dinosaurs based on their stats. As it stands now, I'm sorry Ceratosaurus fans, but when it comes to where I place it, I kinda had to place it in the lower tiers. You see, in a head-to-head -head clash with a proper mid-tier, just head-to-head -head clash, no terrain bias, he kinda falls short with stats. Don't believe me? Then just go up to any mid-tiers you see and see which one of you can bite each other to the death first. I will say this though, he is of the upper class at the lower tiers. If the Serrata went on a head to head clash with any of the lower classes of the lower tier, then there is no doubt that he would win. I could also say that the Serrata are a mid tier but of the lower class of the mid tiers. You know, a mid tier, just not the strongest of mid tiers. 
Now that we have an idea on where Serada is on the food chain, we will see that Ceratosaurus are definitely suited for a hit and run strategy rather than a head to head, with the exception if he faces lower tiers. In this fight, you will see why having hindrances and obstructions are critical for win against an Apex as a Serada. Should the opponent try and do any charge attack or any counter attacks, then having obstruction may limit their vision. It can also grant you cover, enough to be able to sneak up on your enemy and then land a good blow. Pay also attention to how having a phalanx tail can help you outflank your enemy and land a blow. Because you're faster than Apexes and you heal faster, then if you get low on HP, you should create some distance and slowly but surely regenerate your health bar. Unfortunately, unlike Metricanthosaurus, you do not have any healing calls. So if you do plan on fighting Apexes, then expect long battles. Having obstruction can help you, but it can also go against you. Having too many could also limit your movement. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Also, with the recent updates, this goes without saying, but also watch out for your opponents if he has a stomp ability. However, should your opponent catch on that limiting your movement is the way to fight, then I would say you should call off the hunt. Your only good point over the apexes are your mobility, and if that is taken away, then you can only attack from one direction, making it easier for them to hit you. At this point, it's not worth it, so just call it off. When it comes to fighting mid-tiers, then this is something I actually recommend for new players to not do. You see, the worst opponents you could face are actually mid-tiers. Unlike Apexes, they have the speed to keep up with you. And if they have invested in turning speed, then they will have the ability to compete with you in that area as well. The only thing you have over them are your better terrain compatibility. This is why I recommend an area with elevation, as most mid-tiers can't jump, and this could save your life. If you do insist on fighting them, then I can only recommend trying to use the terrain to your advantage. You can handle fall damage much better than they can. So if you do fight the mid-tiers in a place with elevations, then they will have to look out for where they step, at least way more than you have to. Again. Mid-tiers are the worst opponent you can face as a lone Serata, so usually I would just try and avoid them. I want to refer back to the tier list I made. You see, the Serata can win most head-to-head -head clashes with his fellow low tiers, even amongst the upper class. However, for mid-tiers, he can win a head-to-head -head clash with the other lower class of the mid-tiers, but only if certain conditions are met. One of those conditions being if you can get a head start by landing a fully charged bite on him. Followed up if you can tail ride him, getting a lot of hits without taking too much damage yourself. If you are fighting against a lower tier, then you will soon find out that it is pretty wasteful to try and compete with him in a battle of speed. Let him come to you, and then continue trading blows with him. He can take less hits compared to you. Also, many of the underclasses of the lower tiers have bleed effects, which is also why it's not smart to move around a lot. Also, try to move to an area where there are obstructions that can limit their movement. It will make it easier to keep up with them. When you see that the terrain can work with you, that's when you'll strike. Remember, you still might have bleed on, and you can only get those hits in by limiting his movement, so moving away from those obstructions aren't clever. 
Taking a defensive stance against bleeders like this are definitely the best call. But what should you do if there are more than one? It goes without saying, but if there are more individual of apexes or pseudo apexes or mid tiers, then you should definitely not attack. If you are attacked by more than one, then my first advice would be to run. If running isn't an option, then I would target one and just focus on that one. Pay attention to this, by having the balanced tail, it will be more difficult for your opponents to shake you off, and it's easier for you to stay on target. Of course, personally, I do think that this strategy is a bit 50-50. But sometimes scabbling pays off. If you're attacked by pouncers, I wouldn't worry too much if you have a body of water nearby. First I want to say that trying to target one of these quick boogers, and trying to compete with them in a contest of speed and stamina, well, that is a bit of a waste of time. They are faster and way more agile than you. If you need room to breathe, then use your charge bite as a bluff. They do know the attack damage can be pretty devastating. But back to the fact with the body of water. If you are certain that there are nobody in there, you know, crocs, spinos or other semi-aquatics, then I would say use the water to your advantage. Let them pounce you, and then walk over to the body of water. Then try to waste as much stamina as possible. They will waste a lot of stamina with the swimming animation, and with no stamina, they are usually easy pickings. So to sum it all up, against an Apex, use the environment to your advantage, be it to dodge your enemy attacks or to land one yourself. Remember, obstructions are your friend, but if there are too many of them, they can obstruct your movement and then make it easier for your opponent to hit you. If the Apex decides to put his back against the wall, then it's usually not worth it to try and continue the fight. I say it again, try to avoid fights with mid tiers if you're a solo Serrara, but if you insist, then try to use the terrain to your advantage, and then you do anything to get any damage in be it you biting them, or the terrain giving them full damage. Against low tiers, take a defensive stand, and then let them come to you, and if you see that the obstruction limit their movement, that's when you're attack. Or of course when the chance just presents itself. Against multiple attackers, try to focus on one, and then keep on target until he or she dies. Against pouncers, just go to the nearest semi-aquatics free body of water. Then walk to an area where they can't reach the bottom. Then make them waste their stamina. They will further just waste their stamina in the swimming animation. And then kill them when they have next to nothing stamina. There aren't too many differences in group battle. If you are in a group, then just apply everything I say about hit and run and then just take turns on hitting the target. If you have any specific creature you want me to cover, then just comment it down below. And with that, I will bid you guys adieu and see you later. Goodbye!